What you're looking at here is the Japanese release by Tsukuda of the Monogram Buck Rogers Earth Defense Directorate Starfighter plastic model. Japanese release. It's identical. It's just uh, with the Tsukuda name instead of monogram. Now, the monogram one goes for a hell of a lot of money. Here in Japan, you might luck out. You might actually find this and the seller doesn't know what they have. Now, there are some like really legendary models like um, a friend of mine um, he uh, he works at Hobby Link Japan I mean one time he told me that he found um, the uh, the robots from the black hole the Disney's movie black hole by I believe what was it NPC made those and uh, he, he bought those for like super cheap at the Shizuoka Hobby show because the seller had no idea what the hell he had uh, this is a classic example. Now, um, I had originally bought a Buck Rogers Starfighter complete in box um, for, gosh, I, I forget, I, I found it in um, um, Shimo Kitazawa at a toy store there. I mean, that it's, it's Shimo Kitazawa is a place in Tokyo, and they um uh it's, it's it's pretty cool for like young urban youth kind of um, atmosphere there and uh, there was a toy store and they they would sell smurfs and all sorts of junk and um like for example lunch boxes i guess i saw my old return of the jedi lunch box those uh, metal lunch boxes we had as a kid in the 80s and i saw a pac-man lunch box same one i had totally awesome so, and they had this kit for, gosh, like, uh, how much? I, he, I got it for half off, because they had a half off sale that, that weekend. It was like a special weekend. And the man was selling it for, um, I guess, because it was half off, I think I sold it for like maybe 4,000 yen or so. And then later... I found a, another one with an even better box. This one here. I got it for like... Uh, I, I found it at a hard-off in Kofu City that's in Yamanashi Prefecture for like... I, I think like 2,000 yen or something crazy like that. And it's just unbelievable. Alright, so let's look at here. They did a pretty fantastic job. You see, they kind of weathered it a bit and everything. It looks pretty nice. They did a really good build for this uh, this kit on, on the box here. And on the other side is just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. You know, in pursuit of the hostile draconian marauders, blah, 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 whatever. Um, the cool thing about the Earth Defense Directorate Starfighter here, which I guess I've seen it re referred to as the Thunderfighter. Um, Star Wars fans, we have like this immediate affinity to this uh, subconsciously, and the reason is because this was designed by Ralph McQuarrie. This was originally, you know, okay, so Glenn Larson, who you know, if you don't know that name, I mean, you should. I mean, that Glenn Larson really shaped my childhood. Um, uh, I mean, just with Buck Rogers as a kid, Battlestar Galactica, Knight Rider, um, e even the other the stupid crap, like uh, which of course I thought was great at the time, like Auto Man. 
I'd, uh, I'd like to see it nowadays because that was just it's just totally cheesy. It's just a Tron ripoff. But um, Glenn Larson, he he was a pioneer, I think, for the for the eighties. He 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 really pushed forward some really awesome science fiction shows, um, Buck Rogers included. Now I always growing up, I always thought that Buck Rogers um, was made prior to Battlestar Galactica because Buck Rogers has a more you know it has a campy cheesy feel to it I must say now um, that is not true though um, this actually this show actually came out after Battlestar Galactica Ralph McQuarrie this was his design for the Colonial Vipers for um, for that show and um, as as you may know, a lot of people who worked on Star Wars also did the effects for Battlestar Galactica, and that's what was just so amazing about that show was just because like every Sunday on I think it was what NBC I would watch uh, Battlestar, and, and like every every week it was like watching like a miniature episode of Star Wars with the the level of of uh, uh, special effects that they used for that show. It was just fantastic. Um, Buck Rogers was, it was, you know, I like the show. I mean, it has, it has like that, that, that can't be cheesy feel to it. But, it's cool. It's cool. I mean, he, he's, he's pretty much a badass. Um, the second season of Buck Rogers, though, was kind of dumb. I mean, they didn't have Dr. Theopolis. They didn't have, uh, like, like, Mel Blank stopped doing the voice for Tweaky, and instead of being on Earth, um, they kind of were aping the uh, Battlestar Galactica premise, like, you know, looking for lost colonies of, of Earth, of, uh, you know, Terrans that had been scattered uh, around the galaxy prior to the, uh, the Holocaust or whatever. Um, you know, it, it was okay. I, I don't know. I forget what was the name of this... They were on a ship called, I think, the the, the, the Searcher. They had um, uh, Captain Matt Asimov, who just wasn't as cool as the original guys. Um, they had, like, um, not Dr. Theopolis, what's his name, I forget. Um, shoot. What the heck is his name? I got Wikipedia going up here now, here. Um, first series. Uh, uh, Dr. Huber, that's his name. Yeah, he was the one who was uh, calling the shots, pretty much. Um, so yeah, the second series was it had some cool elements like the the character Hawk and his 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 bird shaped starfighter was pretty cool. Um, but there were only two star uh, there yeah there were only two model kits from Buck Rogers ever made this one and the Marauder. Now the the Marauder was the uh, um, oh shoot what was her name the princess. Um, Crap! It was the uh, the Draconians. So the Draconian Marauder was it's okay, I guess. It's certainly not Ralph McQuarrie type, you know, quality of starship design. But you know that's okay. You can find that that model for pretty cheap, uh, for very very cheaply. This one, however, usually commands a pretty good price. I've locked out just because I live in Japan. So. Um, and the, the old one I had, I sold it to a guy on the, uh, the Starfighter Modeler forum. Um, I made a little bit of a profit. I, you know, I was being nice, basically. But, uh, I could have made more, I suppose. I mean, I see gougers on eBay selling these, these kits, but, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, didn't feel like doing that. Anyhow, let's take a look at this. Finally, what you're thinking... Stop rambling about your childhood. Let's just see the damn model. All right, so let's open this up. Uh, you know what? Before we do that, let's look at the instructions here. The um, it doesn't really say what to color the body. It just says uh, on the on the box it says molded in off white, and then um, it talks about you know light gray, dark gray, silver. And brown. It's just the color of the engines here, silver, and then the, the tips of these things brown. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't even call it silver. I, I'm, I'm probably going to go for a steel, burnt iron kind of a thing. Um, these little patches here are going to be like light gray. Um, the cockpit's going to you know, have a black seat and such. Yeah, this is very American style. You know, there's, there's no... 
it just you just see it. You know, it's just okay. This is what you do, and that's all you have to do. Really straightforward stuff. Um. So yeah, what you see is what you get. It does not look like it's a very complicated model. Let's open this up here. Yeah, this is still sealed in the bag. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, Dude, you suck! You suck! Well, at least that one guy on Starship Modeler, he doesn't think I suck because I got it for him. I, I sold him my old hand-me-down one. I was, I was considering holding on to it in case I needed it for spare parts if I really screwed up. But, um, so here's the canopy. It seems to be pretty well preserved. Um, it's got a little, some minor scuffs here. Probably gotta slip, slip this into a Ziploc baggie to protect it better. Um, the decals are in pristine condition. Look at that. Look at that. It's freaking cool. Now what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna scan this because if I screw up and I rip the, these decals because I suck, um, decaling is not one of my favorite parts of building a model because they can rip so easily and um, uh, at least with painting you can strip the paint off and or just paint over it just wet sand it and paint over it but with uh, decals though dude you know good luck so I'm gonna scan this in case I have to duplicate these so I'm gonna put these aside all right you know I'll just take this back in the box here so here are the parts. There's like maybe a loose part here, one of the engines, half of the engine. Okay, and loose. And there it is. Fell down here. This is it. So it has really nice detail. And pretty freaking cool, huh? Not many parts to this at all. Now, you got some cool panel lines here. And then unfortunately, you got some raised panel lines here. What were they thinking? What were you thinking? Um, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about doing that. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, now here's, this is obviously the, the base, the stand here. So, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. You got this, um, check this out. You got uh, what they call here in Japan as the Ichijo mold. Uh, Ichijo is um, named after uh, uh, Ichijo Hikaru from Macross because um, uh, what's his name, Shoji Kawamori from Macross, really went all out with using these these kind of a things. You know, they, um, grab onto it, twist it, and open it. You know, you see all these kind of things on the Macross Valkyries and such. Hey, so um, yeah, they're called Ichijo molds. So, um, the tree is kind of floppy here. I don't know if that's just from age, but, you know, the model itself is it's kind of floppy. I don't know if... It's... It, it's I, it, I'm, I wouldn't be concerned about it. It's it's sturdy enough. So, cockpit obviously does not lift up. I mean, if you're a real pro, you can maybe figure out a way to open this up, I guess. You, you would have to uh, kind of saw this into sections. But, uh, you know, I'm not that kind of a modeler. I'm just not, uh, not that skilled. So you got these, uh, guns here. Now, whenever they show, like, up close on the TV show, it looks more like a, like a machine gun firing. Just, um, but you, you hear the, kind of the, the laser sound. And it's always, like, from this angle. You always see, like, this gun shooting. But when you see, like, the far away shots, you just, like, these, these big laser blasts. You know, like a typical Battlestar or Star Wars type of lasers coming out. So I, I'm not sure what is going on, but I don't know if it's like you got a gun here and you got a gun here and you also got a gun here. And maybe it's just like the, the three of them shoot at the same time and they look like one big laser blast. I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if they were really uh, fleshing out the uh, the universe of Battlestar Galactica when they when they were thinking this out or not. I don't know. 
Um, no idea. There's, it's you don't really see a whole lot of um, information about this. So here is the inside of the cockpit. You got this pretty comfortable looking seat, which is pretty nice, pretty well molded. I mean, it could be just like a big flat, you know, block. That would suck. But this is this is nice. I mean, this looks pretty darn comfortable. Now, it's a one-seater, and the, t the TV show, you always see them, like, you know, it's always like a like a two-seater. Like, they're always sitting, like, right next to each other. I, I don't know. Um, I think they have, like, a four-seater available, I saw on one site. Um, but it's, I don't know, they always look the same here. But the, the one site, they had, like, the four-seater, like, the cockpit was much wider. So, apparently, there's different types of uh, Earth Defense Directorate. Starfighters, but when you watch this though, it, it's it's kind of hard to pick up on details like that, I guess. Um, here's the the rear. So this would be pretty cool to you know do some panel linings in here. You got some nice, really nice detail, nice greeblies here. It's pretty freaking cool. And then of course the you know you put these together, and um, you know it just snaps to, or not snaps, but you know it should just. Uh, uh, just glue it right there on top. Let's, let's see how this kind of fits together. Let's find its corresponding uh, guy here. Looks pretty nice. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, you might have to fill a little bit of the seam in there. But uh, it seems to fit pretty nicely together. Nice detail. I mean, what I would do probably is um I'm I'm thinking of probably using some uh, burnt iron and steel. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. So um, let's look at uh, some some more uh, paint options here. So as I mentioned, um, the box on the front, all it does is it just says molded and off-white. That's it. So, I mean, you could use AS20 Insignia White. And uh, that's what I used for this, my uh, Michael Aga model. So, the problem is, I don't know. I might, I might do that, but I don't, I don't want it to look, you know, the, like the, this, this, the same color as as uh, as the Galaga model, I want it to kind of stand out on its own. Um, some people they would use uh, black. Uh, now this is Gaia Notes, a black surfacer, and then go over with AS20 on an, on a Star Wars X-wing. Um, X-wings I always think were kind of more grayish, but um, I've talked to some people on the Starship Modeler forum. And they said that they would use Insignia White, you know, this uh, Tamiya rattle can. This does not come in another Tamiya, like acrylic or whatever, unfortunately. But um, it does come in this rattle can. Uh, you could use that, I guess. I guess, I guess, I guess. I was thinking, you know, one other option is the Mr. Color 316. Now this is uh, white. It's like a U.S. Navy for F-14 F Tomcats. That's, that's a possibility. The, the other uh, Tomcat color here. 315. Gray. This is, um, this is a possibility. Um, this is kind of just like a really light gray. I, I, I picked this up on a whim. This is uh, Duck Egg Blue. Um, it, it just says Blue FS and it gives the FS code. Um, this is Duck Egg Blue. I looked it up, and it is the same as uh, the Model Master Duck Egg Blue that I own. Um, I, I'm not going to do that, I don't think. Um, I'm Actually, I'm kind of colorblind, and I just bought it on a whim. Um, another one here is Light Gray. So I was thinking, you know, hmm, I don't know. The 338, I picked this up. I bought this for the, um, uh, the, the TIE Fighter. And uh, this, this um, fine molds calls for 338 for the Tie Fighter as well as the Millennium Falcon. 
So the R315 is like uh, the X-Wing, um, at least according to fine molds. Some people, they swear by using camouflage gray for the X-Wing fighters. Now if you look, 315, this is a bit darker than this. So I kind of am leaning towards using this on an X-Wing. Um, I mean, then again, of course, this is not an X-Wing. Um, however, this camouflage gray might be pretty nice, I think. Um, I found, uh, for the longest time, there were no videos on this whatsoever. I mean, there was one guy who did a, the Marauder model. Um, until, like, uh, I think, like, June or so of uh, 2013, the guy started putting up videos of uh, his work on this uh, Buck Rogers fighter. And, um, it's, um, I'm, I'm still going through his, his videos, but he, he said that he found some people, they said that camouflage gray is the way to go. It's, it's possible. So, and I might use light ghost gray to pick up the details. Those, these two colors might look pretty cool together. I kind of would prefer, because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm still not uh, totally, uh, skilled. Uh, I would much prefer to just do like a uh, a lacquer on the base, and then you know do the, the the details with an acrylic or something in case I screw up. So if you look at the box, get the box here. Oh, gosh, I love doing starfighters. Um, so you got like this uh, this gray kind of brackets around here. It goes in the front. Um, of course, you got the decals here. Um, so this this gray, and you can see it in the picture here too. So it's kind of like this grayish off-white kind of a color. And then you have like this this light gray that kind of goes in, um, in the pattern around here. So you just would cut along the panel lines, which will make it pretty easy to, to do, and. Uh, mask off and start, you know, airbrushing in the in the middle. That would be pretty cool, I think. So, I'll uh, I'll I'll decide once I start this. But so I I picked this up in um August or sorry, August, October. October 2013. And uh the other one I picked up like um gosh, that was right before Wonderfest in Tokyo like at what end of July 2012 and uh, that was the one that I sold the box on that one was not as nice looking as this box so uh, I got like these little uh, um, how what are they called the fins that kind of stick down and they wouldn't be dorsal dorsal sticks up and what's the ones that stick down I can't remember I don't know. It's, uh, I used to be an expert on fish, but anyhow, um, so you got like these. It looks like there's uh, some flaps here, possibly on the wings. They kind of just fit together. Um, one thing I noticed that um, the gates are kind of thick, but they they look manageable. They don't look so bad, really. There's no flash on this. I don't see any flash on this at all. So, you got like this big huge piece right here. And, um, got a big huge piece on the bottom. And they just kind of fit together like so. So, uh, you'd have to, you know, work out with the uh, seam lines and stuff. So, I'd probably want to probably glue it together and then prime it. We got some other stuff, um, like this part here, kind of fits on the back. I probably want to do the like this like dark grayish, uh, you know, dark gray or black on the inside, so you can see it, you know, kind of when you look inside, because you don't want to leave that, you know, unpainted inside. It'll look kind of dumb. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty no-nonsense kit, I, I imagine. Well, um, we'll find out if we start putting it together. So that, uh, 
the other video I mentioned, um, I mean, I'll put a link to his channel um, when I upload this. Um, uh, he did not actually do the construction. He just had somebody give it to him and asked him to paint it up. So, um, of course, I'm going to be showing you um, from from the very beginning, going through the whole thing. Um, and also, I'm, I think my camera looks a little bit better than his. He's a, uh, I mean, you know, bless him, but you know, he's a, uh, he's just using a cell phone camera, and it doesn't look too good. Um, obviously, it's not a not a smartphone or anything. So, um, yeah, there you have it. Buck Rogers, mint condition. I mean, there's the box is the. I. I don't even see any real sign of wear. I mean, there's like a little crease here in the corner, you know, but maybe I did that, you know, just barely anywhere on this. The color is like really vibrant. It's not faded at all. Um, the one that I sold, actually the, that box is a little bit faded, but this is pretty fantastic. And I got, you gotta love that gun. It's this cool looking gun. I had, I think Amigo had these little, um, Star Wars sized action figures and I had the Mego figure of Buck Rogers and then my um, um, my sister had Colonel um, uh, what's her name Wilma Colonel Deering that's her name gosh I'm coming up with a blank I don't know why I mean I've, I've been watching this show um, I, bought, I bought the DVD box set and it killed me because like the year after I moved to Japan at the Phoenix Comic Con Gil Gerard and Aaron Gray were at the Phoenix Comic Con, and I'm like, oh crap, I could have had them sign my DVD box set. Oh man, I just, just tell them both of you, you're so cool. Thank you for my childhood, and, you know, of course, my dad had the hots for Aaron Gray, of course, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, they had the hots for the lady who played Wonder Woman, too. Oh gosh, 70s TV. Anyhow, um,. I guess at this point I am rambling, so I will uh, kind of end it here, I suppose. Put things back in the bag. So, pretty fantastic, but I have so many other things I want to do right now. So many other models that I want to do, but I want to... Ah, I really want to start on this. Now, i got this uh, TIE Fighter in here that you might see in the background here. I've been slowly just doing that, uh, you know in between other models. I'll be finishing up some other ones here soon though, hopefully. And then I could maybe I can get started on this. So fantastic. Totally cool model. Um not much more to say really. I got this uh Starfighter whatever. Those these logos are pretty cool. The direct defense directorate logos are pretty cool. I'm just amazed that these these decals are in such good quality. Very good condition. So, yeah, thanks for watching. <sighs> no, I, no promises when I'll ever get around to this, but uh, this is it. So, this was in mint condition until I opened up the bag. So, um, feel free to uh, feel jealous. And, uh, I have no idea if I ever find another one of these here in Japan. But, um, I just really, really lucked out getting this for such a cheap price. Only like 2,000 yen. Like, it's like 20 bucks. Maybe, maybe 2 or 3,000 yen. Like 20 to 30 dollars, basically. And, uh, yeah. Feel free to hate me, you know. Take, take it one step up beyond uh, jealousy and just uh, bring it straight to hatred, I guess. If, you know, feel free, I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. But uh, this has been my unboxing video. I'm going to find a plastic bag to put this in. So, thanks for watching. Again, monogram re-released by Tsukuda Hagi. This is... SF old time. <laughs> nice. Thanks for watching.